Welcome to Dark Souls No Death Run Guide. In this video I will show you how to beat Dark Souls without dying. The run takes 2 hours, it's uncut and I will give important advice along the way. Enjoy! For character creation choose Bandit and take Master Key as a starting gift. The Master Key is absolutely required since it opens important shortcuts which are otherwise not passable. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed. Shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire. And with fire came disparity. Heat and cold. Life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. First of the day. The Witch of Isolith and her daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight and his faithful knights. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenge the dragons. Gwyn's mighty lords drew the heart their stone skins. The witches wound great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death. Scales betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. Thus began the Age of Fire. But soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen Carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, 
The undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. So we start out the run in Undead Asylum. The goal is to grab the starting gear and defeat Asylum Demon. This time we skip the Asylum Demon the intended way and run towards the door on the left. In the corridor we grab our shield, which is the spider shield, dodge the arrow from the hollow either by walking around it or rolling through and then grab our weapon, which is the battle axe. Coming up is the rolling boulder. Stay near the wall and turn early to avoid it. Regrettably, when oh. now I must be and think. After we do a running attack at the hollow on top of the stairs, we run through the door, kill the other two sword wielding hollows and progress towards the boss. For Asylum Demon we want to do a jump attack by pressing forward and right trigger at the same time to do extra damage. The plunging attack is automatically connected on impact follow up by rolling his attacks and attacking from behind. Firelink Shrine, we grab humanity and progress towards Undead Burg. The hollows can be a bit scary, however we d just do a simple strategy of running past them and dodging their attacks. To get past the hollow on the upper stairs, we stay close to the wall to create space on the right and then use this space to roll past him. Arrived in Undead Burg, the goal is to get Gold Pine Resin, kill Taurus Demon, pass Havel's Tower, get Grass Crest Shield and Longbow. Then get the Firekeeper Soul, craft plus 5 Battle Axe, kill Gargoyles, ring the first bell, get items in Firelink Shrine, kill Lotrek for Ring of Favor and Protection and Reinforce Estes. There is a bunch of hollows in this open space. 
the goal would be to dodge the arrows and wait a bit for the latter to come out such that we can run through toward the bonfire. After resting at the bonfire, the enemies are reset and we run toward the next room. In this room we want to kill the two axe-wielding hollows and then wait for the hollow soldier to let us pass. After grabbing the gold pine resin we make a late jump to get over the railing and then jump over the rolling barrel. The barrel jump can be tricky, to do it face to the left and jump early. Then immediately roll forward right to evade the hollow's attack. We kill Crystal Lizard to take advantage of a potential Titanite Chunk drop, however it is not mandatory to do. For Taurus Demon we apply Gold Pine Resin. If you are having trouble, try to pay close attention to his attack patterns and time your dodges well. We kill the Demon to get extra souls for later upgrades. Havel can end the run because of his massive damage, however his attacks are fairly easy to evade. We drop down the ledge right before him, so he follows us and his attack animation is interrupted. Keep in mind that you are invulnerable while opening the door. So we drop down to get the grass crest shield. To deal with the black knight you want to run by his right side and dodge when he attacks. In this example I make a mistake and roll too late.
we kill another crystal lizard for titanite chunk. This run I get lucky twice. Again, killing the lizard is not mandatory. The demonic foliage can drop purple moss which is useful for curing poison in Blight Town. We take off some equipment to stay below 25% equipment burden. This way we keep the ability to fast roll which eases up combat. Next we clear the area of all the hollows. If you are having trouble with this part or your Estus runs out, you can try to skip this part. Just kill the hollow in the stairs and run past the naked hollows above.
back at Andre, we craft plus five battle axe to prepare for gargoyles. Not resting at the bonfire allows us to safely traverse the area without enemies. For bell gargoyles we apply gold pine resin. Make sure to hit the first gargoyle in the tail. This way he is stunned and easy to deal with. The second gargoyle dies in two hits. Firelink Shrine, drop down at the bottom of the elevator and get Homeward Bones and Lloyd's Talismans. Now is also a good time to get the six firebombs, however I happen to forget it and come back later. We use forward and right button at the same time to kick Lotrek off the cliff without aggroing him and reload the game to get ring of favor and protection. With the ring we get higher equip load and can equip the hood while still keeping fast roll. Also you should level up and put up to 24 points in vitality.
upcoming segment is Blighttown. The goal is to get Chloranthi ring, kill Quelag, ring the second bell and kill Ceaseless Discharge. We want to preserve Estes and not rest at any bonfire to be able to warp back to Firelink Shrine with the Homeward Bone after we are done in Blighttown. After warping back to Firelink Shrine we will buy 50 large arrows from Andre and level up. The infested barbarians can just be run past. There is only one attack which can hit you. It is a fast swing from the top right to the bottom left. If they happen to do this attack, evade it with a well-timed roll. This jump can be a bit tricky. Position yourself to make a straight roll to land on top of the tree's edge. Equip the ring after getting it.
For the fight against Quellag, we use our last gold pine resin. If you are low on Estus, you may want to heal up using humanity. When she jumps at us, we roll to evade damage. The strategy for this fight is to pay close attention to her attacks and position ourselves so that we don't end up in the lava. When she does the sword attack, we can dodge it by what walking as close to the spider's head as possible. In this safe spot we can even place an attack. The third swing is a thrust and should be dodged to the left or the right. Make sure to stay high health throughout the fight to make sure her blast attack doesn't kill you. We kill Ceaseless Discharge with the cheesy method. After grabbing the gold hemmed black set, we let him swing out his limb and run back to the fort gate. He runs after us and leaps in hesitation. Then he is stunned and we finish him off with a few punches.
After warping back to Firelink Shrine, we level up and put 24 points in Vitality, 22 points in Endurance, 16 points in Strength and 12 points in Dexterity. Also we equip the Goldhemmed Black set. With our high Endurance we can afford to put the whole set and keep fast roll. We buy 50 large arrows from Andre, which we will use to deal with painting guardians in Anor Londo and Ingward in New Londo ruins. Go get yourself killed. Next segment is Sense Fortress. The goal is to get Lightning Spear and kill Iron Golem. To get safely past the swinging axes, wait for the first one to swing back and then immediately run through and stay on the opposite side of the axes respectively. To avoid the Serpent Soldier, simply run in a straight line toward him and set course slightly to the right when close before him. On the bridge with the Serpent Mage, wait for him to shoot aus out his first shot, then position between the axes for the second shot. At the end, run past him and let the arrow trap finish him. After the fog gate, wait in the room for the boulder to crash the enemies you left behind. If they happen to make it in the room with us, we use the battle axe to eliminate them.
choose uh, to not fight the Mimic, but instead use a Lloyd's Talisman to open it and safely get the Lightning Spear. Normally the serpent, sh serpent mage would s stand at the wall of the staircase and you would do a running attack at him. However, in this playthrough I get a situation where the mage is in a weird spot. I deal with it by hitting him and pushing him to the side until I can run past. Equip the lightning spear and go up the tower to fight the giant. To trigger his attacks, stay close before him and to avoid them, run through his legs and stay behind him. To deal with Iron Golem, we run through his legs to evade his attacks and then poke him with the lightning spear. He takes 7 hits until he staggers. We position him so that on the 7th hit he stands facing the abyss. After being staggered and taking damage, he will fall down and victory. Next segment is Anor Londo. The goal is to get Demon Titanite, grab the Crystal Halberd, Havel's Armor, and the Occult Club, which we craft into Divine Club plus 5. Also, we will kill Ornstein and Smo and place the Lord Vessel. We want to get the Demon Titanite laying in the right chest. To do this safely, we kill the Sentinels one by one. Battle Axe is preferred for this. 
to pull only the first sentinel stand right at the edge of the great pillar keep in mind that they will stagger after two consecutive hits Again we pull one sentinel by standing at the edge of the pillar. After eliminating the second one, we use Aloyd's talisman, the mimic, to get the crystal halberd. This weapon gives us a big increase in damage at this point. Now we pop our souls and sit at the bonfire and level up. We put 28 points in vitality, 24 points in endurance, 20 points in strength and 12 points in dexterity.
Painting Guardians can be safely destroyed with the high range and damage of the Crystal Halberd. To make our life easier on the small walkway on top, we used the longbow to pull the Painting Guardian towards an area where we want to fight them. One of them even gets confused and falls off to his death. Keep in mind that they sometimes charge at you in a straight line, making it possible for them to fall off the edge when you are standing near a junction. You can see that happen to the last one of them. next part is an exercise in dodging. We dodge the sentinel to the right. Make sure to stop sprinting far enough before rolling or you will instead jump and be vulnerable, vul vulnerable against his attacks. The batwing demon, demons do a jumping attack which we evade with a well-timed roll. They may shoot lightning after us that's why we turn around and watch their attack patterns. If they shoot lightning spears, dodge late to evade it. To deal with the arrow shooting silver knights, we run up the ledge until the big pillar on the left protects us from arrows coming from the left. Then we walk up to the silver knight in our path while simultaneously dodging his arrows. When he switches his weapon to sword, we, we run back because we know he will walk at, as, at us in a straight line and if we stand far enough away from him, this will make him run into the abyss.
kindling the bonfire gives us 10 Estes and makes the area and especially the boss fight easier. We take a long path and fight the Silver Knights just to get the two Demon Titanite laying in a chest. This will be used later to upgrade our next weapon. We get into the main hall by doing the staircase jump. If you are having trouble with this jump, try jumping early and aiming a bit more to the left. At the giant blacksmith, we use our collected titanite chunk to upgrade our crystal halberd. This is not mandatory, however it will make the fight against the ne next boss easier. Also we modify our occult club into a divine club plus 5. We will need it to permanently kill the safe self reanimating skeletons in the Nito boss fight. If you want to take an extra risk, there is another titanite chunk laying protected by the batwing demons near the edge.
So here we, here we are at the Ornstein and Smo boss fight. The strategy is to kill Ornstein first. We keep our distance towards Smo and always try to put a pillar between us and him. While doing that we closely watch Ornstein's attack pattern and punish him whenever his defense is open after one of his attacks. When Smo enters hyper mode, we try to trigger his jump attack or sideways swing by running towards him. Be careful however to immediately turn if he does his shoveling attack. After attacking him we pull back to be safe of his lightning ground slam. If you need time to rest just hide behind the pillar. Chosen undead. Ah. After getting the Lord Vessel, we level up and put 28 points in Vitality, 25 points in Endurance, 24 points in Strength, and 14 points in Dexterity. This is the fire.
upcoming segment is the catacombs. The goal is to kill titanite demons for more demon titanite, get the gravelord sword, kill pinwheel and upgrade the gravelord sword to plus four. Run past the skeletons while blocking their attacks and roll off the ledge on the other side of the canyon. To fight the titanite demon we equip spider shield, block his attacks and immediately after blocking lower defense to regain stamina. Between his attacks we hit him to get damage in. Make sure not to be hit by his slow grab attack, it will deal high a high amount of damage. After fighting the demon we pick up eyes of death climb into the coffin to enter Gravelord Servant Covenant and get the Gravelord Sword.
in Tomb of the Giants, follow the colored markers and jump off the ledge to land on the lower level and slide down. After grabbing the Skull Lantern, we teleport back and warp to Undead Parish to kill the other Titanite Demon and upgrade the Gravelord Sword to plus 4. This will be our final weapon of the run. Now it's also a good idea to kindle the Bornfire in Firelink Shrine and restock on Estus. I miss out on that for now. Next segment is Tomb of the Giants and New Londo Ruins. The goal is to kill Nito, buy Crest of Artorias, craft plus 5 Spider Shield and Longbow, and, and to kill Great Grey Wolf Sif and the Four Kings. To keep fast roll we take off gloves. Now equip Skull Lantern and follow my path. Try to keep your distance from the skeleton beasts, they can be quite a pain. The strategy for Nito is to equip Havel's armor and Divine Club to deal with the small skeletons. Then, when they are done, unequip armor and equip the Gravelord sword to fight Nito. Position on the opposite side of his sword so that his attacks won't hit you. I if he happens to grab you, 
Repeatedly press right button and left button to negate some of his damage. Back at Undead Parish, we buy Artorius's crest and upgrade Spider Shield and Longbow to plus 5. From now on, all souls will be spent on leveling. The way I do it uh, is to put enough points in Endurance to have at least 88.4 max equip load and put the rest into Vitality. Go get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow.
The strategy against Sif is to run away from him until he comes at you and then get under him. Other than that, it's just learning his attack patterns. I grab the Ring of Sacrifice for the first encounter with Seath the Scaleless. Getting the Ring is optional.
So on this bridge we want to kill the two ghosts who are chasing us and then shoot Ingward with arrows to kill him and get the key to the seal from him. To get to the Four Kings boss fight, simply do drop down the ledge and run to the Fog Gate. Don't forget to equip the ring, Covenant of Artorias. The Four Kings boss fight is all about stamina management. Make sure to always have enough stamina to dodge their attacks. Other than that, the fight is fairly simple, because we have enough damage to kill each king before another one spawns. If a king happens to shoot a magic bullet, just tank it with your shield.
next segment is Duke's archives. In this segment we, we run up to the first thief, the scaleless encounter, take the scripted death, run down the crystal cave and kill thief. Simply roll through the first ore and run around the second one on the left side. Now we take the scripted death against Seath. The only thing we need to pay attention to is not to get cursed. Having soft humanity, which is so shown next to health and stamina, increases curse resistance. Also we want to get hit only by his laser and not stand too long in the crystals to avoid curse. The ring of sacrifice is optional, I pick it, I, I pick it merely for aesthetic reasons. Instead of the scripted Seath encounter, you can do the Duke skip, however it is not developer intended and tricky to perform.
The crystal golem is best dealt with by simply running past him, taking the right side. In the fight against Seath the Scaleless, we first destroy his life crystal. Then we deal with any man-eater shells who followed us into the boss arena. Regarding Seath himself, we run in and attack when he does a ranged attack. If he does a close range laser or an explosion, we run out. Keep in mind that Seath's attacks can damage the man-eater shells.
upcoming segment is Demon Ruins. The goal is to kill Demon Fire Sage, Centipede Demon and Bed of Chaos. After the annoying Capra demon, there is a hole in the walkway on the right side. Walk left to keep safe. Instead of fighting the burrowing rock worm, you can also choose simply to run past it. Same goes for Dark Spirit Knight Kirk.
the main struggle with centipede demon is the camera angle. The strategy to fight him is to stay next to his legs, hit him and watch out for his stomping attack. Cutting his tail will make the fight a bit easier but is not mandatory. You will get the orange charred ring anyways after he dies. In Lost Isolith, follow my exact route. The pathing is so that no bounding demons will be aggroed. After taking the bonfire, I port to Firelink Shrine to grab the fire bombs I forgot earlier. The Daughter of Chaos can be scary because of her high damage. 
we run at her and do a running attack. This way she gets staggered before she can do an attack and we simply finish her off. For Bed of Chaos we do the Toki Bomb strategy. We place ourselves between the first and second tile of the floor and do a step back by pressing B without walking. Then we use the bow to aim at the dark spots on each side of the boss. After opening the inner path we roll fast into the heart chamber and finish off the boss. If you get hit by a flame pillar, you should survive and there will be enough time to use a humanity and heal back up. Now it's time for the last segment of the run, which is killing of the first flame. In this segment we will kill Gwyn and finish the run. All the coming black knights can be dealt with by running toward them in a straight line and then pass them around their right side. For the Gwyn boss fight we equip the spider shield. The strategy is very programmatic. We first dodge his jumping attack. Then we stay close to him and wait for his next attack. It is very important not to hold the shield up since this will cause him to kick us and deal massive stamina damage. Instead we want to react quick for his coming attack. If he does a grab, roll out of it. If he does a slow attack, parry him and do a critical hit. If he does a quick attack, block the first hit and parry the second. After doing a critical hit, there is always time to circle him and get in an additional attack from behind. If you are low on health, this can be used as an opportunity to heal. After healing, Gwyn is very likely to do a slow attack. Stay close to him and repeat the algorithm until he's dead.
This was Dark Souls No Death Run Guide. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Uh.